Hello, everybody. I'm Aoife White from Bloomberg. Now, today we're focusing on the Digital Markets Act, which aims to rein in gatekeepers that may essentially control access to some services. I suppose the big thing is uh, trying to create an ecosystem whereby European businesses can contest and can, can operate fairly. The difficulty is it's extremely hard to predict how the rebalancing will work out. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a, there, there are double unknowns. Is first, we, we have to predict how the regulation works. And then second, we have, we have to predict how the markets will develop with or without regulation, which is in itself already incredibly hard. We need flexibility in the system because these digital markets have developed so rapidly that something that works today, maybe tomorrow, may not work the day after. There isn't this clear um, com competition normative structure. Uh, it's rather just this uh, fairness. And the fairness argument or the fairness balancing seems to be very much, well, what's fair for suppliers? Not really what's fair for consumers, uh, you know, what, what, what is going to help uh, make sure that there's innovation in the space and consumers are continuing to get the benefits of uh, the platform business model. We do need innovation and we do need to ensure that that, that continues because that absolutely benefits um, consumers and indeed small businesses as well. But the relevant question is, what are the lawmakers going to do of the knowledge generated through the judicial process that is currently taking place? Uh, uh, before the courts. I don't think that there's any possibility at this stage, in, at least at the European level, that efforts to self-regulate will, will preempt um, a lawmaking initiatives. I think the good things that we have now with the DMA is that there is more room also for a negotiated, regulated outcome. I think this, people feel that it's time that there is some regulation for, uh, for the, in the digital area. I think it's important for everyone, and, and in particular for innovation, to have a pan-European approach. We need to build firms in Europe with relevant capabilities, able to go in markets, move away from, bad, from, from you know, unprofitable markets. We need to raise managers. We need to create this appetite for uh, entrepreneurship. Will the smaller ones benefit or, you know, it, are all these new interoperability requirements going to mean a shift of resources towards servicing these, these, these bigger uh, business users who benefit from all of the, who, you know, who have the resources to benefit from dealing with customers directly? Thank you very much. You've raised some really, really interesting points. It's given me a lot of food for thought. I'm sure it'll give all of you a lot of food for thought. We have a very busy year and a half ahead, two years, God knows, even longer, uh, to try and, and see where this goes to and see what will come up. It's really the beginning of the process.